This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 9, Section 3, Part 3, Ionic and Molecular Practice Problems. So now you know how to do ionic compounds, name and formulas. Now you should know how to do molecular compounds, name and formulas. So now these are going to be practice problems all mixed up. So remember that they're both. They're going to be both ionic and molecular, and they're all mixed up. Because in the real world, elements and compounds are all mixed up. So when we look at those ionic compounds, remember there are three main types. Your binary, which would be a metal and nonmetal. Your metals will sometimes have multiple charges. And of course, those compounds that have those polyatomic ions. Now your molecular compounds are always going to be binary. So for your ionic compounds, you should have that cheat sheet in the back of your packet with the periodic table and all the charges and the names of those ions. And for your molecular compounds, you might want to have out your real periodic table where it just has the name and the a symbol uh, because you know how to change the names now, the, the anions, to um, I'd uh, according to chapter 7 because um, they're always going to be binary. So again, you're going to do half writing and half naming. So this might actually help understand the difference between an ionic and a molecular compound. So I believe in your notes packet there's a little chart like this. So wait until I'm done filling in the whole chart, hopefully you'll get that understanding, and then pause to fill it in. So when we have an ionic compound, an ionic compound is always going to start with a metal. So one thing that we need to look at is what does the compound start with? If it starts with a metal, then we know we're going to name it the ionic way. If it starts with a non-metal, then we know we're going to name it the molecular way. So we really need to focus on what that first part of the compound is, a metal or a non-metal. And that's why we spent so much time when we talked about the periodic table, where those metals and where those non-metals are. So if we look at this formula of an ionic compound, we're going to look at iron, Hmm, iron might have those multiple charges. So now we're going to have to crisscross backwards to figure out the name. So this is going to actually be iron 3 oxide. So it starts with a metal. Not only does it start with a metal, this metal has multiple charges. So we need those Roman numerals. Where this guy, since it starts with a non-metal, ding, 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 I should think of those prefixes. So this name is going to be carbon dioxide. So really what I'm getting at here is, first of all, metal versus non-metal and what the compound starts with. And if I'm going to use Roman numerals, remember that those Roman numerals correspond to the charge of that metal. However, those prefixes correspond to the number of atoms that are in that compound. So there is a big difference between the two. So pause and make sure to get this information into your notes. So, oh, again, the metal and the non-metal there, what it starts with. So, again, for this particular section, what I would strongly recommend is do five of the formula to name. Play the video to check your answers. I'm not going to be saying too much, but if you get them all right, do the rest. However, if you're getting some wrong, you might want to star those and then maybe do another five. Play the video, check your answers. Again, as you go through them, if you're getting them right, then you finish that column. But if you're continually to get in things wrong, you might want to kind of star them and make some notations as to what maybe you're doing wrong. You might be doing the same um, the same mistake over and over or are you all over the place and you're just not getting it so that's when you need to either touch base with me during class time when we're doing our book work or with another classmate and again you're going to do the same thing when you go to that next column when you're going from name to formula uh, same kind of deal. Do five of them, check your answers. If you're on the right track, continue on. Or if you want to just keep doing five, five, and five chunked, it's up to you. So be sure though, however, if you have questions to ask me or a fellow classmate. And again, you can always go back and re-watch some of those prior videos for that better understanding to see those examples again and hear my words again. All right, so I would pause the video, try these five, and then play to get the answers. 
So hopefully if you've tried, a couple things to think about. Did the compound start with a metal or did it start with a non-metal? If it started with a metal, you want to check for multiple charges using that ion cheat sheet. If it started with a non-metal, you should have those prefixes well known now, right? You should know those prefixes and you should be just using your normal periodic table. So here's your answers. Pause and look them over. So you should have paused, checked your answers. If you're, oh, if they're all correct, you're on the right track. If not, again, make notations as to what you are getting wrong. All right, try the next five. And you should have tried those and here are your answers. Pause and make sure uh, that they look exactly as is. You need to make sure you have your I's and your eights and your ites correct. You need to have those uh, Roman numerals. You need to have those prefixes. Everything has to be as is because this is right or wrong. The only thing that um, it doesn't matter is if you capitalize. So sometimes I capitalize the names, sometimes just the first name, sometimes the second name, sometimes both, sometimes neither. That I'm not worried about. I'm more worried about you understanding the endings. All right, try the next five. Hopefully you paused, you used your cheat sheets, you're using your packet of notes, and you got these as an answer. Again, pause and check them over. Hopefully those kinds of things make sense. And notice, guys, I'm not looking at the ion parts anymore. I don't need that information. That is just helpful to you. Those ion parts are just helpful to you. And you only need that for uh, ionic compounds at this point. And try the next five. And you should have gotten these as an answer. All right, so now we're going the other way. Now, can we go from name to formula? And again, for some of you, this is gonna be easier, and for some of you, it's gonna be more difficult. So hopefully you paused, you used your cheat sheet and your notes packet and got these as an answer. Again, they have to look exactly like this. And hopefully you're understanding your parentheses, getting a better understanding of your parentheses, and your numbers are always down. Remember, these are not charges high in the sky. These are your uh, subscripts down below to tell us how many do we need of each to make each of those elements happy. All right, try the next five. You should have paused and now pause again to check your answers. And hopefully those made sense to you. And next five, you should have paused, again, using your cheat sheets and your packet. Pause again to check your answers. Hopefully, again, the more you're doing, the more it's making sense. And the next five, you should have paused and tried them out. And now pause again to check your answers. Again, parentheses when needed, no parentheses when not. Um, and if you can reduce, make sure to reduce because I will be looking for the reduced answer. That would be the more correct answer. All right, we'll see you in class. And again, if you have those questions, um, feel free to ask me or another classmate.